Stop saying for the difficult if you're going to avoid the difficult. If that resonates with you and you are someone that says for the difficult and you avoid doing things because they're hard, stop. That's our think piece for today. So everybody want to be a bodybuilder, but don't nobody want to lift that heavy ass weight. Ronnie Coleman said it years ago. For the difficult enjoyers, understand that because you train for the difficult, you have to do things that you don't necessarily enjoy. I personally do not enjoy my warm up regimen. However, logically, it's super beneficial to me. And I'm still going to drop that upright road tutorial video, by the way. This is low key me teasing it a little bit. So. Anyway, my warm up always includes some sort of low grade pump work, so like dumbbell bench, dumbbell rows, and then upright rows to work my external rotators. That's my bread and butter warm up. Now, just in terms of the actual workout itself, something that you really have to learn for long term training success is how to develop certain instincts when it comes to your training. So, something that I like to do is that I'll structure my training in a four week block, and then when it comes to return to that same training day, I'm not necessarily trying to hit an all time PR on that exercise. I'm just trying to chip away at whatever, you know, I did that day. So like a month ago or about four or five weeks ago, I did sets of eight on that pressing exercise. So this time I'm doing sets of nine. You know, I could have done more, probably could have done more sets, but I just chipped away at what I did. Same damn thing with the seal row. So I used the trap bar seal row for the first time about five weeks ago. I did 205 for a set of 10, I think. Now I'm doing 215 for a set of 10. So you can either choose to increase in reps or weight. It's just what you feel like you're capable of and you need to be able to be present enough in your training to know what you're good for. Watch my predicting PRs video. That gives you some food for thought of just a way that you can go about developing that thought process within yourself. Another thing that you really just need to know how to do is how to develop your training split in terms of your exercise selection. It breaks down very simple, right? So here's the golden tidbit. People are going to charge you tons of money to just fucking maybe tell you this. They'll program it, but they might not even tell you why you're doing what you're doing. But anyway, there's a few things that you want to fulfill in terms of function with your exercise selection. You have your main movement. It's the movement that you're trying to get stronger at any rep range. For bodybuilders, you're training eights, tens, whatever. Your main movement then is accompanied by variations of that main movement. You want to use a variation that allows you to push the prime movers with more volume, with less stabilizing muscles. Just lets you do more frequency and volume. So that's stuff like leg press, hammer strength, chest press, deficit floor presses, things like that, that are either removing the stability factor or just increasing the amount of stability you can generate. Then you have your extended range of motion variations that challenge your stabilizers a little bit more. That's like dumbbell press, Bulgarian split squats, deficit stiff leg deadlifts, single leg dumbbell Romanian deadlifts, things of that nature. Then you have your ab work and then you have your upper back work and that's gonna include things like traps, rhomboids, lats, and so on. And then you have whatever applicable isolations you have. So it's like hamstring curls, tricep rope pushdowns, whatever you need for your training or want in the case of like a bodybuilder, right? So you might want to do bicep curls just for the way they look, quite honestly. This alone is going to help a ton of y'all with paralysis by analysis and just honestly paying for coaching when you don't really need it yet. Coaching, in my opinion, and I won't speak for others because I'm not going to fuck with nobody's bread, but in my opinion, you go to a coach when you're in a position where you have a, you know, a long term just idea of what to do for general training success, but you have a specific roadblock or a specific topic or capacity that you want to learn. So it's not for people who barely even know what a five by five is. If nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, if you reach out to me and you ask for coaching, I'm going to say no shame on you for asking me and throwing your money at me. I appreciate your trust, but go use this free training resource that I fucking spent three hours on and it's super detailed super easy to follow it's a very predatory uh, kind of meta that we live in so i don't know just on my soapbox a little bit wanted to give you all a little bit of gold and tidbits and just uh <laughs> you know not gatekeep for the difficult but just remind you guys like if you're gonna say something know what you're saying and embody it you know if you're gonna say for the difficult don't avoid shit just because it's hard i'll see y'all later though peace